the word of God revealed. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. St. John 16, 13. At the time of physical as well as mental and spiritual distress in this country and abroad, there was a seeking for divine reality. The philosophies of men were inadequate to cope with humanity's problems. Man had reached his extremity. The people and the world were at a place where nothing short of God could help and lift them. Then came the electrifying words, God is here, and in our day and in our time they found him teaching and preaching in the little fishing village of Sayville, Long Island, New York. At his home in Sayville, believers drawn from all walks of life and racial abstractions gathered around the abundant banquet table to fellowship with the living Christ. Never had such words of wisdom and power from the Infinite One fallen on the ears of humanity. The words flowed from his lips in a never-ending stream. Words of life and spirit and love. They were so numerous that the small staff who had voluntarily set about to transcribe them could not keep up with their transcriptions, nor could the press publish them all, and many of these wonderful words have been buried until this very day. Now a larger staff is busy getting them out to the press so the world can benefit. The following are jottings from the early notebook of one transcriber recorded for the enjoyment and enlightenment of some, and as foundation stones toward a perfect world for others. I thank you, Father. Father Divine's words from the notebook of John Lamb. Installment number 34. It has been quite noticeable in the meetings recently that a certain group who appear to be of one race and station in life, who follow Father at a distance but do not make the necessary sacrifice to be in the kingdom, always sit together in the meetings and push right up to the front and take the best seats. In speaking to some of this group, Father said in part, There is a consciousness so strong of mortality in you that you want to group yourselves off. There must needs be a consciousness there, as long as it exists in you, to rebel against that consciousness openly just as much as you are subject to that tendency of grouping yourself off. That came from H-L. Now, that is why I stand as I do, and that is why I am and have made up my mind to establish this truth if it costs a million dollars a day, yea, even if it costs a hundred million. I mean to universally establish this truth, and every narrow mind that desires to live in the spirit of separateness and desires to live on in a selfish, limited expression, you subject yourself to lacks and wants and failures. As I said before, when you claim to know me, and try to live in your mortal consciousness around me, you bar yourselves from that which you think is yours. And when you try to bar others from that which you think is yours, and then live in my state of consciousness, or live in my world, 
you bar yourselves from it. Neither shall you see my face in peace until you shall have relinquished those mortal claims and sacrificed every mortal version of your human mind and be a living sacrifice unto God and say, Not my will, but thine be done. Now I said today, there are those that used to be here, but since they are not living now and in your consciousness, you do not see them in person, and they do not enjoy these blessings, and they are not here to annoy or to antagonize the spirit of the consciousness of my presence. That segregated and prejudicial seed that was so manifestly uppermost in the hearts and lives of some that thought they were of some special group or race, they would sit apart by themselves or those that think they are of some nationality, those that think they are Jews, they are segregated. Those that think they are Jews, I say they are segregated. They think they are Jews, and so they are. They are segregated, and yet they think they are W-H-I-T-E, and yet they are segregated. Those that think they are N-E-D-R-O-E-S, they are segregated. But that is a thought to consider, that those that think they are Jews, they think they are W-H-I-T-E, and of the W-H-I-T-E race, and all such abominable foolishness as that, and yet they are segregated. The other nationalities do not want to count them, you see, so what is it? So it will always be like that, one nationality against another nationality, but especially between the Jews and the Gentiles, and then what they call the C-O-L-O-R-E-D race combined, or what they call the C-O-L-O-R-E-D nationality. Those things are the things that have always brought destruction and great bloodshed. But the time is out for it now. And every mortal version which causes the reflection of God to express the outer condition being manifested, manifesting the condition of the mind within. The spirit of resentment towards that spirit of mortal segregation Therefore, he is manifesting a frown of resentment against all mortality and all of your mortal versions. If you desire to see the smile lying behind my frown, commence through self-denial and confidence to give me your whole heart and mind. It is wonderful. That is what it is all about. There was a man used to come here last summer, and he used to claim to be W-H-I-T-E. And he and his wife, they both claimed to believe in me and be of me and claim to testify of me and claim to be living in me and of me. But they are not here now and they will not enjoy this kingdom or have the spirit of my love until that prejudicial seed shall have been rooted out of their consciousness and out of their system until they will not have that mortal germ of the human blood in them and be of one race, creed, and color. For out of one blood God formed all the nations. They shall not enjoy it until they do say, Blessed is this messenger, and I surrender all until they consciously and unconsciously openly surrender all and say, not my will, but thine be done. My will is that all be absolutely one, and that that prejudicial seed be rejected from your consciousness and completely purged from your system, out of every joint, every muscle, every limb, and every bone and even from every atom, fiber, and cell of your bodily form, that Christ may reign in its stead. It is 
Wonderful. Then die to it. I know you do not feel like it. You feel that you ought to be in your mortal mind, that you ought to have some kind of race or nationality. But because you feel like it, just don't do it anyhow, and let it be buried in the depths of the sea that it may never rise against you in the world of the spirit or in the world of materialism, for that abominable spirit has been there from your earliest existence, and truly might he have said, I will purge you and purify you as gold and as silver, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. I am purifying you now of that bigoted seed, of that national pride, and of that political pride, of all that pride in the social world, in the national world, in the religious world, and being expressed in your racial world. Every denomination is denation. I pray that they may be one, even as we are one. Now you see, you all hear something that you don't want to hear, don't you? While attending a small informal breakfast in New York City, Father was asked, Just what is the Holy Ghost? And how is it that some are suddenly taken with it and go through violent movements and others show no signs of it? Have those that do not make any movement received the Holy Ghost? Father replied in part as follows. Everyone has the seed idea of the Holy Ghost in their lives, whether they are conscious of it or not, because it is the life of God, the Spirit of the Christ, but it has not been produced into the actuality of the Holy Ghost. It is the same as an egg. You may think a fertile egg has a chicken in it, but it has not been brought into the expression of a chicken. Now, I could say that Mrs. Madison had chicken for us, this for us, this morning because we had these eggs. Well, we have had chicken, but it was unmanifested chicken. It was concealed chicken. It was undeveloped chicken. The egg had not gone through the process to develop that chicken. Therefore, it was not chicken. The average person would say that we did not have chicken. But just like you that have not the Holy Ghost, that have not been quickened in your lives to cause you to be quickened in words, deeds, and actions beyond your control, it has not been brought into expression. Therefore, the egg universally known is not a chicken. Universally, you could not swear that the egg is a chicken. But yet, psychologically, you could swear that the egg is a chicken. But directly speaking, it would be a falsehood to say that the egg is a chicken. Question. Well, is it necessary to have that emotional expression to have the Holy Ghost? Answer, well, it is a true development of that emotional expression when that spirit has been brought into fruition. When you lose contact with yourself, your personal emotions, whether they be in my understanding and in my view, whether your personal emotions be of emotional quietness or whether they be of emotional vigoration and moving about, and such as that. If that is your way, until you lose contact with yourself. When you lose contact with yourself, why then that Christ within you will rise, which is the Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, 
which is the spirit of the Holy One which was crucified, dead, and buried. The Holy Ghost means the spirit of the Holy One that was dead and buried. You did not use the word Holy Ghost much before the crucifixion of Christ, although holy men, speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, which was calmly known as the Spirit of God, said, He, God, moved out upon the face of the deep. When one is alive, you say, I saw someone's spirit today. But when they are dead, you say, I saw a ghost today. But if Mr. Lamb or Mr. Joseph should come in, you would say, I saw their spirit come in today. But if it were a dead person, you would say, I saw a ghost. Well, now, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of the Holy One of Israel. After he was crucified, dead, and buried, because he was not here in person, supposedly, and his spirit came back as one risen from the dead. Therefore, it was called the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost comes into you according to your relaxation, consecration, concentration, and self-denial. There are so many people that have a perfect personality and a perfect individuality that are without condemnation from a moral standpoint of view. You may hold yourself in that state of consciousness, and by knowing that you are not actually condemned, and by nothing coming to you to convince and convict you that you are guilty of sin, you may live in that abstract state of consciousness, and the Spirit of the Almighty cannot come in. But when you are convinced many times, you fall down in your mind, and oft times you will fall down in your body. The acts of the body are but the outward expression of a condition of the mind within. So therefore, you may see them falling down in the churches, etc. They have fallen down mentally and spiritually at the feet of Jesus in their consciousness. They see where they made a mistake. They see where the life that has been advocated concerning the Christ is right, and they are not right, and they are falling right down at the feet of Jesus, and that is when you see them fall out. Some are more readily convinced and convicted than others. Some are full of their preconceived ideas and opinions, and so they cannot be so easily convinced of their sins. When you can convince a person of their sins, they can easily see it. But it is hard to convince a minister because he believes he is right. At least he says he is. And they want to hold to their integrity. And they hope that someday when they die, God will forgive them. Especially if they are successful and prosperous, it is hard for them to give up. But the time will come when everyone will see and know that they must. At a recent meeting in Englewood, New Jersey, the lights in the hall dimmed perceptibly and continued to grow dimmer and dimmer as the meeting progressed until the light in the room was more of a reddish glow than the yellow of the lights when we first entered the hall. This was particularly noticeable just before Father stood up to speak. When he did speak, he said, There is such a cloud of witnesses in here tonight that they dim the lights. The air is filled with them. A great many are here tonight from Asia and other parts. The spirit of him as many are always presenting themselves as many before the throne, Europe, Africa, and Asia, and all parts of the world respond to the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice, 
and a stranger they will not follow, but they will follow me to the end of the world. Now these words are not merely applicable to the individual personal bodies, but they are applicable to every living creature on the face of the earth. It is wonderful. My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow, and in it ye hear my voice hidden in your heart. Why? Because this mighty voice that was crying in the wilderness is the same voice being produced and reproduced and manifested and remanifested in another name. A stranger they will not follow. Think not to say within yourselves that we have Holy Wesley, Roger Williams, or anyone else to our Father. For I say unto you that God is able to raise up from these stones children. Now aren't you glad? And if your heart is hardened, this love can melt it. This love will melt the heart of a stone and change your vile body and fashion it after his glorious body here in the presence of the holy angels. It is wonderful. My sheep hear my voice. And then there was a voice heard as a voice of many waters and as the voice of a great flood. Do you not hear the voice as the voice of many people tonight? And wheresoever I am, you hear the voice as of the voice of many people, as would be the tongues of many people, which is but the interpretation of, I heard the voice as of the voice of many waters. Do you not hear the word thundering down from Mount Sinai? And I heard a voice as of the voice of many waters, and as of the rushing of a mighty wind. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with many harps. And I heard a new song. Do you not hear the new song? Is this not fulfilled mentally, spiritually, and from a material standpoint of view? You hear the voice of many waters, and you hear the voice of great thunders, and you hear the voice of many harpers harping on many harps. And they are all around here singing as though they were new songs before the throne. And it appears as though none can learn the song or songs, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which are redeemed from the world. It is wonderful. Those of you that are being redeemed from among men. Now, if you don't feel healthy, say so. If you want to be poisoned with corruption and sin, say so. If you don't want to be redeemed from among men and be poisoned with all sorts of things, you know it is no wonder all doctors want to cut you off to get the poison out of you. That is what causes it. That is what causes gallstones. That is what causes tumors. That is why you have to have operations. It is wonderful. Be redeemed from among men, and then you will have healthy bodies. Yes, I say redeemed. That is what I am talking about. Redeemed. And you will have healthy bodies, and you will not have them until you are. Redeemed from all kinds of sin and filth in your mind and in your system. First in your mind, and then in your system. Therefore, cast such out of your consciousness, and you will also cast it out of your system by casting it out of your consciousness. Being redeemed from among men, and being the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. That is why these angels around here can jump so. They feel so good. Why? 
because they are redeemed and they are not defiled with woman. Now again I say to you that choose to die. You can go back to sin if you want to. Life is promised to you that will live the life as Mary lived before Jesus was born and as Jesus lived after he was born. Nothing less than the sample and the example. Nothing less than coming to that measure of that stature. You will come to old age if you subject yourself to debauchery and all those conditions and things. And this is the way that you can free yourself from those conditions if you have heretofore been defiled with such pollution. But if you don't, all these things will come back on you and you will be in a worse fix than you were before. They will come back to you worse than they ever were before and you will be in a worse fix than you ever were before. Truly might have the Lord said, In the day that thou hearest my voice, harden not your heart. It is wonderful. Now this old heart says to the mortal mind that it desires to live in mortal consciousness and thinks that that is the glory of life, living in the mortal version. But I wish to say, you will be subject to worse things than you ever were before. You are lucky that you are not dead. I call for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Now you have been as a suit or a dress or something. Why then the smoothing iron will iron you out without a spot or wrinkle when you have been washed clean by the life of Christ and ironed out by the Holy Ghost. It is wonderful. Then you will feel good. You will feel happy. You will feel useful as Mr. Joseph does. You know, I like to have someone to talk about because it is better to preach another than to preach a brother. So then, I don't have to go away back to preach Jesus in this particular case, but I can preach Mr. Joseph. You see how Mr. Joseph jumps around? If he had not been living the life before he saw me manifestly, you all can see that he is living it now. And he gets around better than a lot of you here. It is wonderful. Get all old and broken up so you cannot get around, will you? Live the life of Christ and you will produce the life of Christ in your lives. Cast out of your system all bigotry, all prejudice, all envy, all malice, all hatred, and all of those tendencies that tend to disturb the peace of God and the spiritual communion of the Holy Spirit in yourself and toward your fellow men. And let there be no division among you, as the Bible says. Some of you, I know that you are born of that prejudicial seed, but fast from it until it will leave you and try to find some hiding place. I know that you are born of the prejudicial seed, some of you, saying that I was born in a Baptist home, yea, even rocked in a Baptist cradle. And some say, when I die, it will be a Baptist funeral. I know that that prejudicial seed has been handed down from ages back. But fast from that seed until it flees from you. It is wonderful. When Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness and the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. 
The great love master fasted from that appetite, from that desire that came to him to command the stones to be made bread. Then that same DVL came, that same mind. It came in another way and said, you can go and get up on the pinnacle of the temple. Get up there on the pinnacle of the temple and jump down. But when that thought came to him to do that, he fasted from that thought. He fasted from that thought and would not do that. And then that mind saw that it could not have any hold on him or on his life. So it came to him in another way and said, Now, you will not subject yourself to me in a way of material appetite. You will not subjugate yourself to me in a way of social fame to prove that God is with you from that standpoint of view. I will carry you up on an exceeding high mountain and I will show you the kingdoms of this world. And I will prove to you that political fame will rule over your mind and bring you into subjection. I will show you the kingdoms of this world and all the glory of being an international king. And just look at the political fame you will have. That is much more than the social fame or the religious fame you would get by jumping down and having the people think that God is with you. But you get up there and then all the world will know that all the world is with you. If you will fall down and worship me, all of these things will I give you. Christ, the great love master, fasted from that, from the great political fame from the religious fame, from the material appetite, and would not subjugate himself to those temptations and all of those desires that came to him. Fasting from them, then those desires left him, and it says that Estienne left him, and the holy angels came to him and ministered unto him. If you fast from those human or mortal desires, fancies, or pleasures, and continue to fast from them for righteousness' sake, and will be just as Jesus was, why then, that DVL will leave you. Just as when the speaker said a little while ago when she would be in her slumber at night and the DVL would try to come, she didn't say the DVL, but I know that is what the mortal mind means. He could not stay because she had made up her mind to fast from mortality. All mortals are subject to death, and as long as you live in mortal consciousness, you will suffer death, and your body will see corruption. But because Jesus was willing to fast from mortal appetites and fancies and pleasures, why then the DVL had to leave him. And the holy angels came and ministered unto him. And it was no record given only then, and even after then, that Jesus satisfied this human appetite. It is wonderful. That was a sample and an example for you that you must be willing to deny your fancies and pleasures and appetites from a mortal point of view and press on in the love of God and the Holy Spirit of the resurrection will take place in you. And after a while you can say, In that I died, it was unto sin that I died, and now I live unto God. Then Christ will rise in you and be brought to fruition in your lives and manifest Christ in your soul, and you will doubt no more. You will fear no more. You will want no more. Then you will want no more, I say. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is wonderful. 
Then you can be just like Mr. Joseph's ax. You see, you all have to get out of Mr. Joseph's way when he gets going. I told the sister, you don't have to get out of the way because he won't step on you, but he may step over you. His feet won't hit your head. Everything will be all right. Why is it? You all know he has been living the life. Now, I am not speaking about myself as a person. I am speaking about Mr. Joseph. It is wonderful. So truly, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now then, so much for that. I just wish to say, in regard to the different testimonies that you have heard, I have said in one of my recent composed but often rehearsed mottos, I will preach Christ in words, but more so in deeds and in actions, and I will put my spirit in them and cause them to walk in my statutes. It was such a wonderful testimony when the young man there spoke concerning the way his wife beat him when she found he was following me and living according to my teachings. The word says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. It is a blessing, dear ones, for that blessed persecution. It is only resurrecting the Christ in you in expression and will bring the Christ to fruition by the persecution that you go through and the Christ will rise and reign in you as in the body called Jesus if you endure it with a smile as a brave soldier. But Christ in you will rise and will manifestly be in you as though it is you, King of kings and Lord of lords. For the victory is in the cross or through by the suffering of the cross. For it is written, Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize? and sailed through bloody seas. I am giving you my word tonight to support you and to deliver you and to protect you. And when those times come, why, there I will be to rise in you higher and higher. And finally, I will lift you above the barriers and lacks and wants and adverse conditions and that mortal mind will see that Christ in you is King of kings and Lord of lords. Fear not, fear not, but rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice, for great is your reward in heaven. And coming through many so-called dangers and so-called unseen and seen dangers, that was the only way to glory. It is wonderful. One writer said, Through tribulations deep, the way to glory is. In other words, he speaks by the apostle and says, Tribulations work of patience, and hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad. So it is wonderful. Now, in reference to the testimony of one of the speakers that was telling about being in prison for a term of three years, now here is one of our attorneys connected with one of the many legal firms that would and do represent me from a legal standpoint of view. To no one of them did I mention Mr. Johnson's name there. I did not even write the jailer. I just wrote Mr. Johnson. And he said the jailer came and just said to him that he was going home. And I had not said anything to anyone else. 
I did not even tell the angels at home. And he sent his suit, he sent his clothes home, and he had never seen either one of us. And I gave them to mother and told her to keep them, for Mr. Johnson was coming home. It is wonderful. If God is for you, who can be against you? Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And he that the Son sets free is free indeed. So it goes to show you the confidence he had in us. He had never seen me, had only read about me, and he sent his clothes home. And he made a beaded bag, as they made in prison there, and he sent one to mother. I said, he will come home. And he came. And that is what I believe in. I believe in salvation that redeems a man's body. Unless the body is redeemed, you don't know anything about whether the soul is saved or not. It is wonderful. I know that he is redeemed from the prison house because his body is here. I know that he is free because I see him. I can handle him and feel him and see that a spirit is not flesh and bones as he is. He has been freed from the prison and the dungeon, even as the body called Jesus was freed from the prison of the tomb. And he came and stood in the midst, and the door was shut against him. And he was behind many doors, and many iron doors at that. But something went in and freed him, and the door was shut. But it unlocked the prison doors and bade him to come out. And there he is. It is wonderful. There is another man at home now. He was out with us last night, equivalently the same. He was in prison, and he also wrote me, and I corresponded with him, and then two lawyers in the city, without knowing anything about me. I had never met them until Friday. Freed him and he has been out three or four weeks. I never met either one of them in person. I never corresponded with them, although I had heard of them. But they went to his aid without a penny, and he is free. He is home now. He was coming out with us today, but we don't have enough accommodation to bring all that desire to come. But as I say, he that the Son sets free is free indeed. And unless you are free in body, you are not free indeed. It is wonderful. For if your body is bound long, you will have a bound mind. And if your mind is bound continually, you will bring yourself into subjection to the bondage of the body. So it is. Now Christ can set you free, dear ones. Now the lady that spoke over there about being sent to the insane asylum, they thought she was out there with me and having a little excitement and the raid and everything, quote, that is a good time to take her and put her in prison for calling that M-A-N God. And that will break that up. They are calling that M-A-N God. And the government will send her back to Spain, where she came from, end quote. That is what they thought. But as she said, not even the friend that signed her in there or any one of them offered her any aid nor visited her in the prison, but thought that she would be bound for life or else would have to go back to Spain and would not be anywhere near me or any of my students. But when I knocked at the door of the heart of the superintendent, I spoke in him and said, 
I will let you go. But then he spoke and said, There were two spoke. That is why you have heard that man is a compound being. When I spoke, I said, I will let you go. The one I spoke, the one I am of every person. And when I say that I am not speaking about matter, I am not speaking about a man or what you see, but I am speaking of that impersonal I am, that I am, and I am in you. I said that. But then the combination, the other combination part of him said, quote, I will parole you out, but you shall not go to any of his people or any of his connections or anything of that kind, end quote. But she has been coming to these meetings and has been out home ever since, and all like that, and he has nothing to do with her. He that the sun sets free is free indeed. The spirit and the blood have paid it all. It set her free, and nothing can harm her if she fears not. But, as Job said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. But if you fear not, nothing can come upon you, and no man had better not touch her. She is free to go where she will, so long as she lives the life and is willing to live worthy of the vocation wherewith she is called, for she is God's temple and God lives therein for her strength and her protection. And wherever she goes, there I will be, and nothing can hurt nor harm in all my holy mountain. So it is a wonderful blessing to see what the Spirit within and the Christ can do for you. We don't care what the mortal mind does, we are not asking the moral mind any odds. And as I often say, if it were possible for the sacrifice, for this body and all other appearances of bodies that claim my name and speak and endorse this claim, if they would be flung off the face of the earth, this truth, I, in reality, would be just as operative then as I am now and would produce and reproduce bodies faster than I do now, and would bring into expression the reality of myself faster than I do now. It is wonderful. There is no way to stop this truth. So I say, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. No way to stop it. For it is not matter, personality, or anything that is corruptible, or anything that is defiled, that you are advocating. But you are advocating the impersonal life, incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Then, if the body would will to discontinue, the spirit and the power of which I am visibly, the same as I am invisibly, would be just as operative without this body or these bodies. Members of the body, as I am, and as was with the name called Jesus, yea, even the body called Jesus. Do you not see that it is more expensive? or more manifested today than it was 1900 years ago when that body ceased to be seen when that body disappeared the manifestation of the spirit was just as operative and more manifested and demonstrated then than when the personal appearance was at hand it is wonderful not that we think about disappearing we are not studying about that. We know that the spirit takes care of the body 
and the body is the house of the spirit, and the body and the spirit are one. And we know that it is impossible for the body to be killed or to die so long as the body lives in accordance with the divine principle. There is nothing to die about the body but the mortal version of the human mind, and that is nothing anyhow. And you can and will live on in your bodies if you keep my sayings and will not live in mortality, carnality, or any of those things of the mortal mind. You cannot die. It will be absolutely impossible for the body to die. And that is why I called your attention to the personal activities of Mr. Joseph, as called into expression here tonight. That would be in the moral version of things, an old man. It is wonderful. So we have something to talk about, something to preach about, something to live for, haven't we? So let these thoughts abide with you, and as in all other places, I am still extending my blessings according to your faith, according to your consecration, relaxation, and sacrifice of your conscious mentality. If you cut off a snake's head, the body dies. Cut off anyone's head and the body is gone. If you sympathize or take sides with anyone that thinks I have been wrong, you are condemning your own head. To condemn God in deeds, thoughts, words, or actions is to condemn your own head. You have summed your life up in God. And if you condemn him, you are condemning your own head. I have power over all flesh. It is wonderful. And I will bring them unto me. I will bring them from far and near. For it is written, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. I have been lifted up. And they are trying to lift me up again through speculation, through graft, and through selling the body of Christ, the materialized word of God, that I will draw all men unto me. Therefore, every knock is a boost. Every criticism is a praise. Aren't you glad? I said every knock is a boost, and every criticism is a praise and not can hinder me. I will do more than I have ever done manifestly. I have done much today, even in this testimony or lecture, much more than you can really see. It is wonderful. There are hundreds have been healed from this message that I am giving out. Hundreds are physically healed of diseases, and God has wiped all tears from your eyes. And there is no more sorrow, there is no more crying, for the former things are passed away, and there is no more sea. Now, aren't you glad? I said I have power over all flesh, and God shall pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy over all flesh. Nothing can hinder God. So remember, I am a free gift, and I say, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. They try to hide from me. They try to take my name and speculate on it. I know when Billy Sunday some years ago used to come through, and when he would have a meeting, he would take up a collection of thirty or forty thousand dollars. But what is thirty or forty thousand dollars in my sight? It is wonderful. It is wonderful. Listen, dear ones, I would not. I would not sell my 
spirit in my life for 30 or 40 or a hundred million dollars. There are others should have brought forth the Christ to fruition in their lives had they not allowed materialism to creep in and the love of money, speculation, and graft to creep in them. They could have brought forth the Christ to manifestation in their lives, but they sold the spirit. They sold it for money, and therefore they never materialized. They never developed the Christ. It was the same Christ in every man born in the world. And had you allowed this Christ to be developed in you, you could have brought him forth to fruition in your lives as well as manifestedly you see it here. Truly might I have said in the person and the name called Jesus, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have hovered thee, but ye would not. You have sold your birthright. You have sold your inheritance. For Esau sold his birthright, and you are worse than Esau, for you sold your birthrights of the Christ life, and therefore it is impossible for you to bring it into fruition in your lives. You sold it for money. That is why. Now everyone that has sold their birthright for money, they will never develop the Christ in their body. You will never develop Christ, and Christ shall never be brought into fruition in your life as a manifested Christ among men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. They have their reward when they have taken a nickel, when they have taken a dime for it. They have sold their birthright. The Christ's life, they sold it, and it will never be developed as a Christ of God in manifestation. It is truly wonderful. They have failed. They have sold it. They have sold their birthright. They have sold it. I am a free gift to the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his Son. Take these thoughts in. Dear ones, now you are glad for me to live in you, aren't you? My spirit and my life, my mind and my love, all of my characteristics to have dominion in you, over you, and you have elected both it and them, King of kings and Lord of lords. Have you not? If you haven't, don't say so. Now, if you don't want it, it is immaterial to me. It is immaterial to me. The spirit is just as operative without a body, for I will put it in another body. There are some of you here now know that bodies were with me 20 or 30 years ago, and God Almighty translated them. But they would not walk in my statutes, and their spirit is in other bodies today. They wouldn't obey, I say, but they lived in materialism, lived in mortality, and would not hear the voice of God. And these same spirits are reincarnated today, and I have given them a body as it pleased me. That is what I will do. God giveth them a body as it pleaseth him, a body that will be true, a body that will stay out of the flesh. I have witnessed here. I have witnesses. I called them out of the flesh many years ago, between 20 and 30 years ago, and I told them that I am a free gift, for God so loved the world that he gave his Son. Now rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now aren't you glad?
Well, anyway, if you know that you are right, what can wrong right? If right cannot protect itself, it needs to be eradicated and allow the negative to reign. I know positively well that if I cannot succeed, then the world would go in darkness. As Dr. Greer said, it would go back in darkness and all of civilization would go down and it would disappear as it appeared. Therefore, we don't think anything about it. We know that we are the victory. We are the faith and the love. And without these, all men would go back in darkness and they would lose, even humanly speaking, their right minds, words, and deeds. Without this expression of truth as put forth in this expression, without it they will do it, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the darkness, for I am the way. Some day, Somewhere and somehow, it will be as I want it to be. My love, my spirit, and my grace and my mind can have its free access into the mind and into the heart of the children of men. You know, it is wonderful when the mist has cleared away and that bright sunlight of love shines in without the least drawback. That is why I say so often, we should be happy no matter what the people say, as long as you are in perfect harmony, in one heart and in one mind, happiness and peace must abide. And the only time dissatisfaction or anything else will appear is when you are not of one heart and of one mind. If you are a bandit, if you be of one heart and of one mind while you are at work, it is wonderful. The song says, In the volume of the book I come to do thy will, O God. It is the volume of the Book of Life. You know, there are many volumes and there are many copies of most of the great books. Some of the great books, there are 10 volumes, some 20 volumes, and some 24 accordingly. Then there are many copies of the same book, and there are many issues of the same book. So that was a wonderful thought to see and hear it said, in the volume of the book I come. The Spirit said to someone else, In the bottom of the book I come. Well, that was true, because it was the last volume. Out of the twelve volumes of the book, then cometh forth the odd volume, born out of due season. That was when Christ came. So it was at the bottom of the last volume I came. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. It didn't read in all of the volumes of the book I come, did it? But it reads in the volume of the book I come. You see, there were many volumes, but you did not get the significance. You did not get your satisfying portion until you got to the last volume of the book that it brought forth, that which you sought, and then you were satisfied. You were searching through all of the books, you see, but you did not get low to the bottom and get the last volume. But in the last volume you found what you were looking for. You search the book through and all of the different volumes, but you never found what you were looking for until you got to the last volume. It is wonderful. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. 
I think I'd better stop now, for your pure minds are getting stirred up. I thank you, Father, 